Welcome to Without Bias. Apia, the go-to insurance for retirees. Call 13 50 50. Get set, go. Local legends want it. A bowls green is just up the road. Search bowls club near me. Uh, what a thrill it is to be back with Without Bias, Australia's only dedicated Lawn Bowls radio program, the wonderful world of Lawn Bowls we get stuck into each and every week at this time slot. Coming off a big Oz Championships, the Oz Open's just around the corner. So much to talk about. Val Febo is here from Bowls Australia. Hello, Val. Hello, Sam. Good to be back. How are you? Uh, um, couldn't be better. Uh, all thanks to Ride at Home, the official naming rights partner of the Australian Jackaroos. We've got the big boss, the CEO of Bowls Australia, Neil Dalrymple, to join us shortly. Uh, but it is an absolute pleasure to have our first guest here coming off a, an Australian title in the pairs last week, partnering Cassandra Millerick. Uh, a person who I was lucky enough to work with um, at... Uh, I was lucky enough to work with uh, at the Bowls recently, Kelsey Cottrell. Great to chat to you again. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me on. That's an absolute pleasure. Congrats on the title. What does that mean to you? Um, yeah, look, it's um, amazing um, to win on home soil, um, to win with Cassandra, who's a rising star of the sport. She's a really hard worker. Um, she puts a lot of effort in practising and is really trying to make it in the sport. So, yeah, really thrilled for her and and obviously for me, um, the old duck of the team now, just trying to keep um, some titles ticking along and keep my name out there um, for when the next World Championships um, come back around. Hey, Kels, it's Val. You're far from the old duck. Don't worry about that. Now, I was up there last week on the Gold Coast and the weather was absolutely wreaking havoc with downpours followed by sunshine, followed by more downpours. How did you cope with the conditions and the ever-changing greens, I guess? Yeah, look, <laughs> we're pretty used to it up here. I mean, we generally have beautiful weather but at certain times of the year we do cop a lot of rain so um yeah and I think we're just we're just used to it as bowlers to just have to adapt um we had a bit of a late start um so I suppose in the back of your mind you're thinking oh my gosh we're going to be here till 10 o'clock tonight but um at the end of the day you just take each game as it comes um so yeah just sort of do your best if you have to come off um you know it's for the best um but yeah just, just play the I suppose play what you've what you've got um you know the greens were probably a little bit slower but that you know probably played into our hands a little bit in some of the games and in other games maybe not so we had to work a little bit harder when we're playing against the likes of Tassie who are you know quite used to playing on the slow track so yeah it just makes you think that a little bit more but um yeah just another day <laughs> Speaking to Kelsey Cottrell on Without Bias, uh, the official naming rights partner of the Australian Jackaroos are right at home, the right care right at home. Massive decision for you to omit yourself from Com Game selection this year. Birmingham, uh, big gear up to that. The camp's just around the corner, might have already even started. How difficult a decision was that for you to make? Um, yeah, look, at the time it was, it was just the decision that had to be made. Um, just a lot going on. There were two small kids, both at daycare. Um, it's just an exciting time in their life. You know, every day is different. Um, little, little ones are a bundle of joy, but also um, hard work. She was, she was our little pocket rocket. Um, I also started a new role with, with my job at Club Holland South, so taking on a management role, um, you know, pretty close to full time now. So just, yeah, a lot of things going on away from the ball screen. Um, so yeah, just uh, it was the right decision at the time. But yeah, the the team have arrived in the UK, so it's a little bit hard seeing all the Facebook posts of how how well they're doing. Um, you know, travelling over there and playing their first couple of days practice. So you see those beautiful greens at Leamington Spa. I've been over there a couple of times you know, preparing for the Commonwealth Games. So in a way, I feel like there's probably a couple of years of preparation that's been wasted. But um, yeah, it's just um, you know, with COVID and, and and everything that's happened in the last couple of years. Um, look, it's just the way it sort of panned out. But, um, yeah, like I said earlier, just, just working towards the World Championships, which will be back on the Gold Coast in not too far away. It's going to be much easier to, to cope with the kids, being close to home, um, not having to be away as much. And, um, yeah, hopefully a bit more settled into my job and have a bit of annual leave up my sleeve. And you'll have the great Andrew Howie with you at, at the events as well to give you a little bit of a chop out when you're playing, I'm sure, Kelsey. But um, I know you and Carla Krasanik, who's another one that's uh, that's made the call to to forego her participation in the Commonwealth Games. Did you guys speak about the call much together before you made the decision at all? Um, yeah, yes and no. Um, Carla sort of went before I did. She's got two small ones as well, smaller mm. than my two. Um, so she's got a four-month-old, and my, my smallest is only six, is 16 months. So, um, yeah, her decision was probably slightly different um, and probably a little bit easier at the time. She had a very small 
small bub and um, with the, the threat of COVID and not wanting to travel. And um, yeah, there was just a, a lot going on. But when Carla made the decision, I think I'd been sitting on it for a while, probably knowing that it was going to happen. Um, but when she went ahead and made the decision, I kind of got on the phone straight away and I said, how do you feel? And she said, I just feel relieved. I just feel relieved that I've made the decision and I can sort of focus on other things for a while. So, yeah, that sort of made me pick up the phone and, and ring Gary Willis and say, hey, really sorry, but I've sort of been sitting on this for a while and I just, um, yeah, feel like this is a, the right move for me for the next 12 months as well. So, yeah, I think she just gave me the confidence to go forth and do it. It was... Yeah, definitely a very tough decision and um, a few tears, no doubt. But um, yeah, we sort of just yeah move on now. Um, wish the team, wish the team well in their selection. Um, it's going to be really tough to pick a team. Everyone keeps asking me, "Oh, you can't make it now. You guys are not going." And I mean, we were no certainty then away. Um, the conditions over in the UK are pretty tough. So yeah, I think anyone can make it, which is exciting. And yeah, looking forward to watching them when the games roll around. Kelsey, always great to chat to you. Thanks so much for your time. Um, it wasn't an easy choice. Thanks for taking us behind the scenes of making it. And congrats, ag- uh, congrats again on the Pairs title from the Australian titles last week. We'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, Jackaroo Kelsey Cotra with us on Without Bias, the right care right at home. Right at home, the official naming rights partner of the Australian Jackaroo is the CEO of Bowls Australia, Neil Dalrymple, to join us next. This is Without Bias. Apia, the go-to insurance for retirees. Call 13 50 50. Get set, go. Local legends wanted. A Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Club near me. Uh, wonderful to have your company on Without Bias. Thanks to Ride at Home and Local Legends Wanted. Search Bowls Clubs near me. Sam Hargraves, Val Febo with you. An absolute pleasure to be joined by the head honcho, the CEO of Bowls Australia, Neil Dalrymple. Neil, great to be chatting to you again. Thank you, Sam, and uh, great to be with you. Hey, uh, how good is it after about an eight-month eight month hiatus that you've now got the BPL back, uh, the Australian titles are back, top-line bowls is back in full swing. You must just feel over the moon about that. No, it's great, Sam. Look, it's uh, been a tough couple of years for bowls and uh, obviously the uh, broader community, but... Um, The last few months have been fantastic for all bowlers across Australia, particularly our elite bowlers. And uh, yeah, to to have um, competitions back back up and going, it's uh, it's fantastic. And I'm sure, you know, we're all looking forward to the Australian Open and lots of other events as uh, the year goes on. And Neil, we've got the 2022 Com Games coming up, which the right at home Jackaroos are going to be at the forefront of. How much are you looking forward to getting up to Birmingham and uh, and watching them compete and finally, hopefully, get that uh, first gold medal in the Northern Hemisphere? Uh, well, Val, as you know, it's going to be a great challenge. Uh, look, the, the conditions over there in England are going to be uh, significantly different from what we experience in Australia. So, um, look, it's going to be a fantastic challenge. I know. Look, our players are over there at the moment, as, as you know, and um, they're, uh, they're experiencing the, uh, the conditions. Uh, and, uh, look, it's going to be a um, huge challenge, and, uh, but I'm very optimistic that we'll do, do well on the greens there. Got to get used to those slower greens over there, Neil. It's great that you've sent them over. Hey, uh, Australian Open uh, next month. Entries now closed. Yep. Record number of people entering the event. Yeah, that must mean the world to you and Bowls Australia to see this tournament continuing to grow at such a rapid rate. No, it's great, Sam. Look, uh, close to 3,000 entries, it's, uh, it's amazing. And I think it probably, um, it says to me that, you know, lots of our bowlers just want to get out there and compete. And, um, and uh, the, the location on the Gold Coast is, is just fantastic. Um, it's a great place to play bowls. Um, lots, so, many, so many things to do outside of the sport, but uh, the facilities are fantastic. And, um, yeah, look, it's uh, great numbers and we're, lo- we're looking forward to a great couple of weeks on the Gold Coast in June. Yeah, having seen it all last week at Broadbeach, it's a spectacular facility up there. So looking forward to a big month in June. And Neil, uh, one thing I do want to touch on with you is we've seen over the, the last few months the devastating floods in northern New South Wales as well as COVID-19 over the past couple of, yep. couple of years. And Bowls Australia has taken the initiative to start the Bowls Australia Disaster Relief Fund. And tell us a little bit more about that and, um, and some of the most rewarding things that you've seen or some things that have yep. resonated with you. Yeah, look, it started, Val, back in uh, 2010-11 when uh, Brisbane had some terrible floods. So we started the disaster relief program back then. Um, 
since then we've raised you know hundreds of thousands of dollars that have actually been reinvested back in the bowling clubs right across the country. In the re- in recent months, obviously New South Wales and Queensland have suffered really badly, and uh, and again the bowls community have come to the fore and um, you know been very generous and donated funds back to to Bowls Australia, which enables us to then deliver. Uh, money back to clubs where recently we donated, uh, well, we've actually allocated over $40,000 to a number of the clubs that have been impacted by the floods. There's still more applications coming in. I'd really call out to all the, the bowls clubs out there and bowls community that continue to donate. That would be fantastic. And just put money back into the sport and, uh, and I suppose help these people get back up and going and particularly our bowls clubs, um, They've suffered badly. The community suffered badly. But, um, yeah, whatever support uh, Bowls Australia can give is, is obviously going to be fantastic. Uh, bowls.com.au forward slash club dash support slash bowls disaster relief fund. Just get on the Bowls uh, Australia website, www.bowls.com. Before we let you go, Neil, just we don't have a, a lot of time, but what's one of the success stories of that that you've seen uh, and, and where that money's gone to such good use? Look, there's uh, Sam. There's a, look, there's a few clubs that have have suffered really badly. But I suppose, look, where the money's going at the moment is really just to get clubs back up and going again. Like it's simple things, like in kitchens, it's um, it's actually getting the the basics back. You know, bowls, actually bowls, mats, uh, just to help people get back on the green. One one that I do know though is uh, just getting their greens. Like they've got some synthetic carpet greens, and uh, just being able to get those greens back up and playable. Uh, through New South Wales and Queensland, they've suffered really badly. So, um, yeah, a number of clubs are really going to value it. Uh, you're a star, Neil. Always great to chat to you. Thanks so much for being uh, on the first up edition of Without Bias again. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Phil. Neil Dalrymple, the Bowls Australia CEO on Without Bias. Local Legends wanted a Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Clubs near me. And for Right at Home, the official naming rights partner of the Australian Jackaroos, the Right Care, right at home. And don't forget, Local Legends wanted Search Bowls Clubs near me. It's a very, very good game. Get yourself involved in whichever way that you can. There is a Bowls Club just around the corner. Val, good to see you. Good to see you too, Sam. See you soon.